So we move our conversation now to the Limuru 3 conference. What was happening there? What came out of it? What we expect to see going forward? One of the key organizers of that conference is the Secretary General of Jubilee Party, the Honorable Jeremiah Kioni. He's now in the studio. Good morning. Morning, morning. My apologies for stepping in late. No, that's perfectly I right. missed this bypass uh, turning. And you've been here so many times. I know. What happened I, this morning? No, Somebody was on the phone. <laughs> 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 Good to confess. Yes. yes. Karibu sana. Yeah, asante sana, Pauline. Right, you're right. It's yeah. good to see you. Asante. Yeah. So, Rimuru 3. Yes. Uh, we snow bits and bits and, and bits of it, and mm. there are those who are watching it live, and what was being discussed. Let's start from uh, before the Rimuru 3 conference. Y yes. What was it all about? Well, I want to thank you once again, because I remember I was here before the, the meeting, and... Um, we discussed about it a bit. Um, we wanted people to come and uh, say what they think, what they are feeling, how they think they are being managed by the KKK uh, group. And there are two uh, Ks. Oh, there are not three. There are two. KKK. The, the, the three That's Ks. Sleep, <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, the three Ks yeah, were, an, yeah. were an infamous group from yeah. the South yeah, of America. Excuse me because I... Yes. <laughs> That's where I come from. Yes. <laughs> so if, if you hear me say it again, it is still the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean the KK, KK um, the, the, the people in, uh, in, in power today. Mm. Um, we wanted the Kenyans from uh, Aloud the Mountain to come and express uh, their feelings. You remember they were, there was quite some um, heavy uh, organization before the 2022 and um, people had been uh, made to believe that uh, there is nothing good that can come from elsewhere mm. other than from uh, this uh, uh, grouping. Mm. And um, this was the first political organization outside uh, the KK since 2022 within that region. <laughs> so the starting point was a couple of things that we wanted to do. One is that we wanted to see Kenyans themselves uh, coming uh, to speak from that region mm -hmm. because um, for the last almost um, maybe more than one and a half years, you would not have said anything against uh, these guys on the ground. Mm. You'll be heckled because they will always organize people to heckle you. Mm. And um, uh, it uh, required some time for people to see uh, that it was not us blocking them from delivering. It was um, just what we had said from the beginning that uh, it's a group of people who have no idea, crudes, ladders, plunders, I want to form. Mm. And uh, people themselves have come to realize. So we now wanted to hear people themselves saying it so that we can now move to the next level. Mm. We also wanted them to come to bring themselves to the Muru mm. as opposed to there before where facilitation has been provided for them, you know, in the form of money for them to cover their cost of uh, travel. travel and uh, even um, uh, attempting to fight to accommodation, mm. to attempting to give them some money to eat. Mm. This time loud, it was just a question, come. If you are, come on meskia uchungu, kuja. Facilitate yourself. Ukiwa mgojwa, mm. ugoje imutu wakulipe diwede hospitali, mm. unaenda kutafuta hospitali kwa sababu ya uchungu kuna na mm. ayo. And um, we, we told people from the county, ca counties, mm. said names of people you think would want to come and are members of all the parties that have come together. Mm. And names kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. We sent invitation to, to 4,200 people, mm. direct invitation. And the, in the invite was mm. Kalibu Emuru 3, and we want to thank you for your uh, sales sponsorship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everybody came clear in mind that um, you are not coming to correct money. There is nothing expected. That was a major, major. How many people came? We before? had over 5,000 people. So more yeah. than you had invited. More than we had invited. Mm. And I, um, so that was one thing that uh, we were happy about. And when we were there, again, we were told that uh, there is a 93-year-old mm. who has been in police custody for the last um, almost now three weeks. It was going to be three weeks this week. This, uh, this week. And the reason why he was uh, put in is because he is um, uh, accused of having forged a, a title. Mm. 93 year old mm. accused of forgery. Mm. And what has he done? He has forged uh, the signature of um, uh, William Ruto. Mm. And, uh, and now he's taken over the rad that belongs to William Ruto. 
the land is 1500 acres mm. uh, 2500 acres um and this mze has come and we have seen this document ourselves he's come with a title that was given to them 2000 back in 1974 mm. and this is down the infamous dafivi farm mm. the one in uh, dafivi farm the one in naivasha naivasha so this mze has been in custody he was uh, picked the other day and told you oh you have forged when they realized that um, there was a lead by the way there was a lead at um, Uh, at the house mm. Mm. and the the file was completely removed and all the records were removed but little did they know that uh, uh, another set of original copies of all documents were with these old people mm. and they had been given a long time ago so when they realized that they try, they they, they blo- broke into their houses in Naivasha and these are all uh, these are issues reported to the police they ransacked the houses they were trying to look for those documents but again naitadiria uh, udumze Uh, there's something he knows that you do not know so <laughs> there was nothing in those houses uh, and the documents are safely somewhere else and i can confirm to you that i have seen the documents the original title was given to them in 1971 now what they have done is to pick this mze and put him in for those time and what was telling was when we told the story to the congregation or to those who had assembled the conference they were screaming what mpesa number mpesa number i had not had i couldn't tell what they were saying it took me a while it took a while for me to deceive what they were saying mm. but when i realized i said mm. ah so we gave the number of the the lady who has been at the front of this uh, mca jane mm. of my my ma, ma, ma era ward and i tell you within um, some two three minutes 103600 shillings had been laced we were in need of 40000 <laughs> They 40, came thousand as cash bail. Yes because uh, sister had already been laced by the locals. Right. So they came on their own account. They came and ate. They accommodated themselves. Mm. They even went ahead and fundraised and fundraised. That for. is not what has been done. That is completely the opposite of what KK does. Mm. They come with sacks of money and they hire goons if you come near their whatever all those things so that was major achievement number one number two mm. uh, is that um uh, the two nights before and then um, ichungwa has been on record saying hiyo haitafanyika kenya hii um, there was heavy mobilization um, to try and disrupt the meeting and again um, it's nothing like um, allegation where the allegations is there we sent uh, um, pictures of um, Uh, matatus that were lined up somewhere at uh, Roisabu mm. very many of them in the evening mm. and their work was to go and collect uh, young people to come and disrupt the meeting mm-hmm. we want to again thank our young people the ones they have called Mogeki Walevi and the rest uh, they were in their proper senses they organized themselves throughout the night i didn't sleep the night before the meeting and they said mutioyote ambaye anafikiri in fact i use the language they were using mm-hmm. abaya nafikiri alitairi ajaribu kukaribia mkutano um, so we had a few ferrars who came to the gate with pangas uh, concealed but again the system was clear uh, it was stara mm-hmm. and they were um, uh, told to uh, look for a shamba somewhere there and look for kibarua ya kufia kanyasi pa deo na hiyo panga yao na hiyo panga yao so that break. was another major achievement because mm-hmm. most of those young people they took the money but they never actually agreed to board the matatus so uh-huh. it's not that it was stopped they took the money uko inje and they never agreed to come for those things that and is... one of the things they, they had been organized you mm-hmm. can go to githrai and check this it was a fact the member of parliament around those areas including where the shooting came back, uh, happened again the following day at thika what had been told that kujeni kuna chakula we have uh, uh, chakula hii ya kuokota hii ya kupatiana wanaopatiana mm. and uh, they were trying to isolate the young men and the old people so that they could give a brief to the young people of what to do at uh, rimuru mm. and uh, it didn't work and i really thank uh, the people around there for all that uh, happened that day so i have had a few people saying oh this is tribal or whatever i don't think it is a useful debate i will leave it to the historian but um, i think it is important to know that um, we are heading to uh, meru ebu nyeri uh, in the immediate and um, from today we'll be sitting to organize meetings in those areas mm. yes there are those who have pushed back and said look the mount kenya region is complaining about issues that are affecting the country right now yes but the mount kenya region actually has half of government 
very very influential leaders you've got cabinet secretaries you've got the deputy president you've got the attorney general you've got the leadership of the national assembly you've got the leadership in the senate as well you have all these people who are seriously influential and who could be influencing things to support the country i hope none of them is in leadership or one are, of them is actually in leadership as, and this or is has a, been, uh, in leadership before mm. or aspires to become a leader to this nation why because, would you say uh, that that is a myopic uh, the way of thinking that we've been fighting against and that was uh, why one of the reasons why there was clamor for multi-party democracy second liberation and it was to move ourselves from that parochial thinking that uh, because you have one of your own in power then you only helps you that kind of thinking is not the correct thing and it does not matter for as long as the the, the regime that is power is not uh, answering to your uh, desires you have to raise up and uh, you've got to raise your voice and uh, say many things or say the things that you are not happy about remember uh, even during uhuru's time uhuru was from out kenya Luto was able to go out the mountain and tell them, Nyinyi, hakuna kazi na there are no projects, nothing is being done, and it is time that Mwambia uh, Uhuru uh, Mariza Wende. So, um, uh, when you now turn around and say that you need your own on top for you to manage things, I think it is the wrong thing. What we are saying is that our children are not going to school. We have um, inadequate uh, medical attention in our areas. We cannot see projects that are equivalent to the 4.6 billion cherries that have been borrowed in the last 10 years. We have seen a uh, disaster in the floods. Seen, you've seen the rad strides. We still have people buried today, and they have not been this uh, regime. They have not been able to recover the bodies because um, uh, they themselves are a disaster. And I have said before, I also should not expect. A disaster to declare another disaster a disaster that is why we never declared for us a disaster mm. and um, these are the things we are going to say and we will say them irrespective of who is at the helm and we will say it irrespective of who is at uh, um uh, treasury when we say so that who we are need, you directing we need, these uh, concerns we need uh, um you know we need equity in the sharing of uh, uh, resources in this country and we are talking of the mantra one man one vote one sharing and one man is not one man from mount kenya it is one kenyan it's everybody must get a sharing when another is getting a sharing and we all vote equally you know the what you say makes sense but is it the reality that the monenchi believes are you saying the monenchi believes that if their own and meaning somebody who speaks their language who comes from their region is in power they should not benefit is this not what people believe why are you saying this is the thinking you want to remove people from i would not be spending time trying to remove their thinking from there because remember uh, this started back in 1982 uh, not 82 even 82 when the coup was being done by the way and uh, we had the the likes of now raila odinga and others paul muite manyara koigu amwere muge uh, Okuru, all these uh, individuals, they were um, they were fighting against uh, that that same principle, which was uh, perfectly uh, and well employed by Moi. Um, but you can still see people thinking that once you have one of your own in office, you are better off than a person uh, who is there. And again, it's there for people to see. I have been telling uh, people from my region to just uh, start moving around. Pana amka asubuhi unaingia kwa bicycle unaenda kwa hiyo shopping center alafu jioni unarudi kwa nyumba you will not know what is happening. Take a flight to Kisumu. Take a flight to Kisumu and when you approach Kisumu ensure that you are not asleep. Better have see. a look at how Kisumu is they have never been in power. Kisumu is the mo- one of the most developed towns in this country. It's better than Mombasa. If you want to take a quiet holiday, fly to Kisumu. Some of the best quiet hotels are now in Kisumu. They have not been in power. They have been in opposition since 1961. What, what time was it? 63. Three. So, I mean, it is uh, it's, it's very naive. Look at Nyeri. Nyeri is still having iyo mabati. Nyuba ziri jengo na izire mabati ya, ya, ya drum. If you look at that, it's terrible. Go to Kiabu. In Mount Kenya, by the way, the only town that is looking like uh, modernization is Meru. It's, it's, actually the one of, it's actually the best town in Mount Kenya region. Meru has overtaken Nanyuki and all the other towns. So I, I'm trying to tell Kenyans that it is not you are being in power. It is you are being, a, it's you are being able to talk on behalf of your people 
and push and uh, get the, the things done. Mm -hmm. So this issue of thinking that you have, since you are in the Kenya Revenue Authority and those things you are supposed to benefit, is really very, and I'm not going to spend my time doing that. I know, I, we now know better. What we do not want done to our legion mm -hmm. is to be denied our ability to organize politically. Is to de be denied an opportunity to organize ourselves culturally. Mm -hmm. Because that, those are two areas that are hit very hard by this KKK regime. And uh, they started by killing our political parties, by making sure that uh, even you declare uh, people from other regions your kingpin. Mm -hmm. You know, you completely distort the thinking or the lives of people. They have come and again now are saying even Gemma, A stood for Kamba. Mm -hmm. You know, all these distortions are very dangerous uh, to, your, to a community. Mm -hmm. And there are things we would want to have them right. When they, they now arrest our 82 year olds and call them Mogeki, mm -hmm. and they were doing their cultural uh, player at the end of the last year, and they keep them in police custody for a month, mm -hmm. you intimidate, you put fear in people. And this is one of the things, you, they come and attack your cultural grouping. We have this KC, Kiama Kiama, GC, Gema. They bring in sprinter groups. They sprinter them, they pick one guy and he starts talking like he knows everything or anything and he is uh, on their payroll. So this is the thing that these are the things we must push back. When they get your community in a state where nobody can uh, call others, everybody is uh, a boss, um, and it is for purposes of disorganizing you, for purposes of colonizing you in the, after the, the Mzungus. Mm. Those are the things we need to make uh, sure that we have a pushback. And um, also, once mm. we are we are able to push, I am sure we'll get better development uh, attention mm. than we are getting now. So you said that when people were... And you can see, you can actually see after the Remuru, <laughs> the people who were really against the Remuru have already gotten oxygen. You saw what was happening at uh, the Russia Catholic Church. Mm. Uda Ferra has literally talking to Ruto and telling him, uh, you know, calling him bluff. You know, they called him, they used very hard, tough words on him. Mm. That only happened because there was a Remuru. They didn't have the spine at all. They were just spineless to speak out N completely and we are happy that they can speak out at the root core of this mm. and this is what you started by saying is that there's some disquiet with the population mm. on what they feel is the expectations of their government versus the reality of what they see with government and if then you look back in the last regime it could be argued the same kind of thing that when William Ruto, the deputy president, then was even campaigning in Mount Kenya. He was picking on the issues that were impacting Kenyans that were not being um, addressed. They felt were not being addressed by their leaders. So the common problem here, the common thread here is leadership. Whether it's uh, Jubilee leadership under uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, whether it's Kenya Konza leadership with William Ruto and Regatta Gashagua, it's a leadership issue. And the citizens who are feeling that their government is not addressing them. Why are those issues canvassed and how do those issues get addressed? Because clearly, it's the, the leaders that they have in office, whether you're starting from the leadership of the National Assembly or you go into the leadership of any other institutions, those leaders, Kikuyu or not, are not serving their people. That's what the people are saying. I totally agree with what you are, your analysis on, on that issue. And I again go back again to before 2010. Um, I mean, I think even before 2002, but mainly before 2010. <coughs> you remember, uh, before our constitution, you had no hope. You know, it's like you are in a bad governance and you do not know when it will ever come to an end. So one of the major achievements we give to ourselves is that we have an opportunity to go back after every five years <laughs> to say these characters, are they managing as well or are they just a mess? And uh, even if their previous ones were even bad, just assuming they were bad, and you put this one hoping it improves, it doesn't improve, then you also kick them out. And um, we, look for, we continue looking for better leadership. And where, where we are now is that uh, there is no way you can uh, salvage anything in KK. They are done. Dusted and Kenyans are done and dusted with them. And I can tell you, and that's my so I, and I, I want to say, is that, it uh, Kenya Kwanzaa or is it the crop of leaders? Oh, whether they are in Azimio right now mm. or they were in the Jubilee before and now they are calling themselves Azimio, but or they were in Jubilee before and now they're calling themselves Kenya Kwanzaa. The people who've been elected 
into positions of leadership over the last 10 years, over the last 60 years, if it's still the drum mabatis that are, uh, you know, the, 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 what you'll find in Nyeri, mm. if it's still that kind, it just tells you it's the leaders that the people of Mount Kenya elect. Did they get a chance to discuss how they vet their leaders? Um, or would it be you know, one of the conversations that then comes out I, of this? I, yeah, and, and thank you again for that question. I want to agree with you that, um, one, of course, if you want to compare uh, how the previous regime was doing and how this one is doing, then perhaps would, the only way you can get an answer to that is uh, having them on the ballot. Our constitution does not allow them. And asking the, the Kenyans, uh, do you want the way it was being managed 10 years ago or do you want the way it was managed in the last two years? Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, they would want they would rather have the the jubilee regime be back go back and to like Egypt. if that was not the case they would not be crying for uhuru mm -hmm. left right and center yeah but that was uh, one of the things that we surprised us in that meeting what what, what has suddenly woken them up to because answer. everything they have been warned against has come to uh, the turn has come to pass true, and yes. it come to pass and uh, it was not uh, it was not people are not being warned against this group of readers because of um, any personal uh, hatred towards them it is because of their uh, the, we knew them they had it's no capacity because of their track record you and that thank you the, the track record of you must have a track record of the people you want to elect into power mm. and um, uh, kenyans we were actually they were saying there we will never elect this caribou of readers again. That is easier said than done. done. Mm. And the, the responsibility we have our, ourselves as leaders is also to see how best can we help them understand what is expected of a reader. Mm. And as we engage in these discussions, you could tell, I tell you, unfortunately, or for individual, fortunately for us, the previous evening, there was a, di a discussion at uh, Citizen, and people can go on uh, YouTube, they'll see it. And we had sent our own Dato Muridi to go and uh, have a discussion with the current chair of uh, finance uh, committee. And the question is, why are you increasing the price of bread? The young man from Joro, Kimani Kuria, <laughs> answered and said, um, after a struggle, he said, you know, the problem with bread is that it causes diabetes. So <laughs> we need to make it more expensive so that Kenyans cannot afford it. It's on YouTube. That is our chairman of finance in the Republic of Kenya and the Kenya Kwanza regime. And every Kenyan keeps saying, God, where did these people come from? These people you hear calling being called Kawajiko and the rest, they are just a disaster. And that is why I don't want to use the word, but uh, it sums it all. Mm. When you had Kikuyu's Meru and Ebu say to get it It summed it all. They actually said, What the hell? What did we do? To ourselves and what did William Ruto do how did he assemble this kind of people into power and I'll tell you one of the things we would want to do uh, to try and see whether we can help this this uh, uh, very sad situation we put ourselves together uh, as political parties with the uh, presence in Mount Kenya region and there are about 35 of them there is a number of them maybe five of them who are still saying we should not even have gone to the Muru but what we want to do is uh, we want to be, let's be in one room. Mm. We are not going to touch your party. But to Tukai Hapa, to Kubali Kuna by election Daragwa. Mm. Yeah, go and feud. All these people who want to be feuded, give them opportunities to run using all different tickets. Mm -hmm. Let the, bus, the best person win. win. But when you, you, you manage the product before you start even doing working on the product because that's what Ruto did. Mm. Ruto started by kicking us out. Any person who has a head in Mount Kenya back in 2017 and you can ask those who are doing the campaign of 2017. He had a deliberate he deliberately targeted. I tell you my having made th made it through 2017 was by God's grace. It's yes and uh, let me tell you Uhuru had to come to my constituency three times. To campaign and i'm telling we are campaigning as a jubilee candidate mm. but he's already funding himself and giving materials to fellows who are independent and in other parties so i knew he was up against me and i'm not saying that because of anything but is i want you to i want to demonstrate the fact that he deliberately uh, made it difficult for anybody who has a brain of his own 
to make it to bunge or to uh, even uh, to members of a county assembly mm. under KK so that he can manipulate them. And that is why this Lemuru 3 was organized outside the elected leaders because we want Kenyans to speak because they have given up on the elected leaders. Mm. They are not speaking on their behalf. Were you given, did, did, did any resolution come to engage with the elected leaders? Because yes, the truth yes. Is by the way, the, the, the very strong recommendation elected. was that um, even as we try to sort out the difficulties that we have in the region, reach out to all of them. And will you do that? We will uh, we will reach out to those who are willing to, to be reached out to. And, You're speaking um, the same language, for example, with the deputy president. One man, me, one vote, one shilling. Let me just carry on that. Uh, before I come to the same language, I find it very difficult. But um, we will reach out. But again, you must be willing. Because I cannot come and have a cup of tea, a cup of tea with you two, three, four times, uh, talking about Lemuru 3, and then I see you in a church place. In front of Pale Kwaota, you kisema haujui, ujaabiwa, na ujaitwa. You know, that level of dishonesty answers to the KK regime. And we do not, so we will not stop leaching out, mm. but we will not stop organizing our people so that at the end of this process, mm. we have leaders who can represent our issues properly in whichever forum, mm. Senate, National Assembly, County Assembly, at the executive level, whatever it is, even in the opposition. Because even in opposition, you also need a brain. And um, uh, that is something that we are going to do. And uh, when I I asked for those who had vied for various positions to start in the, I was amazed. There were very many. Those who want to fight, there were very many. And those are the people we want to give platform mm. and let them know. Do you know, at, uh, uh, yesterday evening I was called by somebody who said, and a person who I would not suspect that kind of a question, said, you know, I did not know that the finance bill is made every year. <laughs> so if you don't know that, then you actually, even picking a leader becomes a problem. Yeah. You talk of the same language. And I know you are talking about the one man, one vote thing. Yes. yes. Why it was said in um, Embu uh, by Rocco and um, uh, Cicely Balide, the governor, uh, they were trying to preempt the Mulu 3. And trying to, say, but you know, they know what we have stood for, those of us who are not in KK, mm. what we, uh, we have stood for is one man, one vote, one cheering. And I want to repeat here, one man is not one Kikuyu, one Nembu, one Meru, it is one Kenyan. And when you say one man, one vote, one cheering, we are not taking anything from you, Rativ. Mm. Mze, nothing from you. We are only saying you get your one cheering, I get my own one cheering. Every Kenyan must be treated the same, whether you are in Somali, whether you're in Mandela, whether you're in Kisumu, whether you're in Namanga, whether, wherever it is, whether you're in Nyeri, wherever you are, get your cheering because the resources are supposed to go and improve the lives of people. Okay. So when they now say that, I tell you, you can tell, and you know they had already discussed this as Sagana. So it's and mischief. Agreed, total mischief. Uh, but mischief that I believe would eventually has now dawned on them that mm. if you do not talk about the one man, one vote, one sharing, you know, everything has its own time. Yeah. And I thank God because uh, I struggled alone. I had billboards across this country on my own account trying to tell them one man, one vote means something to you. Mm. Stop campaigning against it, UKK, Uda Ferras. Stop campaigning. Jeremiah. Campaign for elective positions, but don't do away with the, don't do away with that which is meant to help your people. And time that's is up. exactly that's mm. exactly what they seem to be wanting to do. Of course, we have to be very careful because I doubt their sincerity. But I, the good thing is that we now have groupings and we'll have these meetings. Yeah. I said we are going to other uh, areas of this county, and uh, it is uh, the haki coalition. When you say haki coalition, you say one man, one, one vote, vote, one shilling, one shilling. We'll invite you again. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.